Good morning. Welcome to Kirsty Knits and Sews. My name is Kirsty, and this is my podcast where I talk about all the things that I am making. Today I have knitting, lots and lots of socks because summer sock camp has started. I have knitting and I have some spinning. Uh, you can find me as Kirsty Knits and Sews on Instagram and on Ravelry. And welcome. I hope you have something to drink, something to do, preferably of the crafting type, but you know, laundry works as well. It is good to see you. I am going to jump in pretty quick today. First, I just want to mention this is going to be in the la my last podcast from Australia for a while. I'm looking forward to getting back to my home in Poland. Um, where all of my, the bulk of my crafty stuff is, but it also means that I'm kind of in a finishing mood because we're leaving very soon and I would rather leave presents for people here in Australia rather than take half-finished objects back to Poland to finish over there and ship back. So that's what I've kind of been doing. I'm on a finishing kick and I would like to say that I am down to five finished objects, sorry, five works in progress. Um... But I've already actually packed two of them, I think. Anyway, I have two active whips that I'm working on, and both of them have started in the last three days because I have just been finishing things, and it feels great. So I'm going to jump in and talk about what I've finished. And this first one, I'm very, very, very excited about because they are the socks that would not be knit. That is right. They are done. This yarn, oh, 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 if you've been around a while, you'll have seen this yarn many times in many different projects. If this is your first time, welcome, and I'll give you a bit of an update. I am going to find my sock blocker so that you can, I mean sock blocker, my sock ruler, so you can see that a little better. Um, that is the pattern on the front of the socks. Um, so these are Veronica Socks by Comfort Zone Knits. I really like this pattern. This is the second pair of socks I've done in this pattern. Um, and it's just, yeah, down the front of the sock. The back is plain. It is a toe-up sock with a flegal heel, I believe, and a gusset. Um, yeah. It, I'm not a toe-up sock kind of person. I'm not a big fan of toe-up socks. Uh, but I did this as a test knit and I just loved the pattern so much that I decided to do it again. Um, and the fit, like it fits beautifully with the flegal heel and gusset. I think probably next time I do it, I'll probably just do it to, um, cuff down and just put this on the front like I would with any other pattern. Um, just because I don't have to think about it that way. The benefit of toe up is that you can start at exactly the right point on the diamond and finish at exactly the right point on the diamond. Um, so yeah, there is a benefit <laughs> to doing this design toe up, but I think if I just ended up with not quite the full heel, that it, like the full toe, I'd be okay with that. Or I could even just keep that pattern going into the toe a little bit while I'm doing decreases on the side. Not sure which I would do. So. Love the pattern, love the socks, the yarn. I should say, they fit beautifully. They are so soft. The yarn. I think it's called Chaka. C-H-A-K-A. -A. It is yarn that my sister and I bought from the Mulberry Tree in Milton, um, New South Wales, Australia. And we bought it three years ago. She bought red, I bought this denim blue. It is beautiful. It is soft. I'm pretty sure there's alpaca in there. I actually, I lost the tag a long time ago, and when I went back to visit again recently, I saw chucker yarn, which is what I assume this is, because it feels the same and has the same kind of um, look to it. Um, but I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's got some alpaca. I don't know exactly what's in it. It is a light fingering, and I think that's why I've had a bit of trouble with it. So I started a pair of socks, and I just wasn't happy with the tension. Um, I usually knit on 2.5mm. I just didn't like it. 
So then I changed to 2.25 millimeter for a different style of sock, which I liked, but I was kind of designing it as I went and I wasn't a huge fan of designing and I just wanted something to knit where I didn't have to think. So that one left. Um, I don't know if there's another something or other in there that I cast on as well. And then last year for summer sock camp, I said, you know what? I'm just calling it. I'm going to take it out. And I'm going to cast on these socks with 2.25 millimeter needles, which I think is what the pattern calls for. Um, but either way, with that needle size, I'm going to do this pattern, which I've done before, and it's going to look beautiful in this yarn, which it does. Um, and so I cast them on for summer sock camp last year, and I had all these plans for all the socks I was going to do during summer sock camp last year. And there were some health things that came up during summer sock camp. There were a few other things that happened, um, but basically these ones just kind of got put to the side. And the reason is I decided I wanted them knee high. Oh yeah, knee high socks would be lovely. Um, if you watched my last episode, I showed these socks and one of them was about this high and the other one was not started. And I weighed on the podcast, I weighed the yarn and realized I was not going to have enough to do two knee high socks out of what yarn I had. And I'm not buying more of this yarn because this yarn has been, oh, the drama. Um, so I just decided to rip back. So I just picked up the stitches on the sock that I had already done most of. I just picked up the stitches according to the top of the diamond. And then I just ripped it all back to where the needles had picked them up. And then I knit the cuff. And then the next day, oh, I think I cast on the next cuff. No, sorry. Cast on the toe because it's toe up. Um, I cast on the next toe. Um and the toe took me maybe a day or two because I just wasn't really feeling it at that point. But then I had a day off and I knit almost the whole sock in one day. Almost the whole sock. And I was like, Kirsty, why did it take you so long to knit socks out of this yarn if you can do that much in one day? It was an unusual day um, that I had that much time to knit. But like I said, the pattern is like I've done it before. It's also fairly simple. Um, it is a, I don't know, 12 row, 12 row repeat or something like that, but it has a logic to the repeat and not everything. Like it's just the diamonds that have the difference over the 12 rows. And then this cable is a six row repeat. Anyway, once you understand the pattern, it's very logical. And so yeah, a day, a day. Anyway, I'm really glad they're done. They are beautiful. And now that I've shown you all, I can wear them. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, so in terms of dates, I started these on the 26th of May, 2023, because that was summer sock camp um, when that started last year. And I finished them on the 31st of May this year. So it was one year and five days to do a pair of socks where one sock took me a day. So one sock, a year, and three days. The other sock, two days. Oh boy. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to let them sit and make decisions. I'm glad they're done. I'm looking forward to wearing them. I know that I will love those socks, but yeah, some socks just don't want to be knit. Some yarn just doesn't want to be knit. I'm glad it's done. I just have plain old regular black tea in this beautiful mug today. This is a Bola Swaviets mug. We bought some back, brought some back from Poland as gifts to people, and some of the handles got broken in transport, which was sad. Um, but my husband just glued the handles back on, and so we've been using the ones that are imperfect and really enjoying drinking out of Bola Swaviets mugs. This is a blueberry pattern. Alright, so I finished these ones first up in summer sock camp. Oh man. Then I had two other whips going into summer sock camp that I wanted to finish. Summer sock camp, if you don't know, is a sock knit along. It's held by Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady. It's held on Instagram and on Ravelry. Go check her out. I'll link her below. Um, yeah, it's just knit socks 
knit, crochet, has to be by hand, you can't use machines for knitting socks. Um, but yeah, knit socks, any size, any weight yarn, have fun. So, and whips are allowed. So I had three whips at summer sock camp this year, and then I kept going. Now these ones you did see last time as a whip, I'm not sure how much was there. And again, I'm going to put my little sock ruler in the middle to give it a little bit more structure. Um, I did police box socks, tartar socks. Um, this pattern is a free one on Ravelry. All of my project pages are linked below. So if I talk about a pattern, um, yeah, go to the project page and the pattern will be linked. Um, so this is a free pattern on Ravelry. It was really quick but I don't know if it was really quick because I really wanted like I was really enjoying working on them or because I just wanted them done um it was a they are birthday present so I can now give them to the birthday boy his birthday was the 26th of May so they're going to be a little late today is the 14th of June 2024 um so they're a bit late when I cast them on it was a week before his birthday and I knew that it would be pushing it and I actually had one sock finished in that week amazing and then I took the second sock to a games night and forgot it and then didn't have it for a week and so then when I got it back I then continued to work on it um, but that was a little bump in terms of getting it done quickly and um, this sock is good I I mean, I love the finished socks. It is done on a 2mm, so it's a much tighter um, gauge than I'm used to. And it's 72 stitches for the foot. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff in the leg, but for the foot you end up with 72 stitches on 2mm. And it's just a much tighter, tighter feel. I'm not sure if I like it. Um, I'm not wearing them, so I don't think it matters if I like them. I can say I did not enjoy knitting this on 2mm needles. I used the yarn. The yarn is um, Sheepy's Metropolis. And this is colour 001. Nice and original there. Um, it does say Bucharest, but I don't know if that's the colour name or not. Bucharest? Um, yeah, it, you can see a little bit of like floats or things sticking out at random points. I don't mind. What was I going to say? The yarn is a bit of a plump yarn. I did use 98 grams for the pair of socks here. 98, which I don't usually do, but again, it's a much denser knit because it's two millimeter and it's a much longer leg than I normally do because has to be a TARDIS. Um, but I also, the two millimeter needles I was using were Knit Pro Zings. And I'm not a fan. And I, I'm sure I've said that here before. I'm not a fan. Um, I find the ends a little bit blunt for the DPNs. And so it's kind of like you have it to a point and then just flat. Like it's not rounded, it's flat. Um, maybe like a slight hump, but like there is an edge to the needle. And I just found it really awkward doing such a small one with flat needles. Like, yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure I bent the needles. I definitely bent the needles while I was knitting it because it was such a tight gauge and I had to kind of push and maneuver to get them in. Was not a fun experience. I don't normally knit socks on two millimeter, so I'm not too fussed about it. Um, I didn't go and buy Chow Goo DPNs two millimeters. I think I have a two millimeter chow goo fixed, but for some reason I thought I didn't, or I didn't know I had it with me. Anyway, not a big fan. I, after knitting these, I'm actually going to give my zings away because I'm just not going to use them. I'm not enjoying them. Every time I use them, I get frustrated with them. Um, and so I'm debating whether or not I've just bought another pair of 2.5 millimeters for my scrappy blankets. Because one set of 2.5 millimeter DPNs, I take two needles for my coziest memories blanket and two needles for my 
um, jelly roll blanket. And then I have both blankets done with one set of needles and a needle to spare. So I did buy a pair of that and I'm debating whether or not I get a set of Chowgoo TP DPNs. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure whether I will get or not, but I was given some money as a gift and so that's one of the things that I'm debating. I just, I'm going to wait till I go back to Poland to have a look and see what I actually have and do a proper needle inventory before I jump in. Anyway, police box socks. Love them. Great. The black and the white. The black is, um, is a hand dyed. It's very, very, um, consistent. It is Mally. Um, do I have the name? Um, Midnight. Um, by Black Wattle Yarn and Fiber. I'll also put all of the names of um, shops and things where I've used things down below if you're interested. Um, so Black Wattle Yarn and Fiber, they have beautiful hand dyed yarns and I just needed a black and they had one. Um, and then the white is just undyed. So simple, simple, simple. All right, the next pair that I finished are these ones. These ones were a lot of fun and I've just realized I don't have the tag. Do I have the information? Yes, I do. It is Katia um, is the brand name, Danubio is the yarn name, and the colorway is number 302. These I also bought from the Mulberry Tree in Milton. Um, it is a commercially dyed yarn. Um, and so all of this striping is into it. And I didn't do a different color for the, t the heel, um, which just means that they just kind of look even more scrappy because you end up, it's such a long repeat that you end up with a certain section cut out. And yeah, really like it. These ones, um, I started... 7th of May and finished 7th of June, so it took a month, but I did knit these ones in the middle of that month, like in their entirety, in the middle. So these ones just for my very simple take, um, you know, take to church, take to Bible study, knit in the car kind of socks. Super simple, super easy. Um, it is, yeah, this is my first pair of vanilla socks that I'm showing you. These are um, Vanilla Socks on Magic Loop by Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, I've done 2x2 two two rib for the cuff and I think 14 rows is my normal um, for cuff length. And then just 40 rows for the leg. These are for someone with size, I want to say 11, maybe 10 and a half feet. So they're pretty long. Um, and it took 77 grams. So for my normal cuff and heel and long feet, 77 grams, which means I have enough to put in my scrappy blankets. Um, Chowgu 2.5 millimeter fixed circulars for these. Um, just to note there, I've been um, helping a friend learn how to knit and Chowgu's are the way to go. Like honestly, it is worth investing money in good tools. If you like, like if you really like using other needles, that's fine. Um, I'm not saying that like you can only use chowgoo needles, not at all. But finding needles that fit well in your hands, that you like the feel of, that the ends aren't too pointy or too blunt, that don't have like a hitch, if you're doing magic loop or working in the round, all of those things are so important. She was, my friend had got a different brand of needles, was ready to give up on circular knitting. Um, and I was like, just try the chagoos, just try the chagoos. And so she went and bought some chagoos and started. And she's like, look, I'm not saying I'm converted, but this is so much better than the other needles. And I was like, yeah, good tools make anything more enjoyable. Like if you're doing wood carving, you wouldn't carve with blunt knives. That's dangerous. Um, yeah, invest in the good, in the good stuff and not in a just go out and spend all your money kind of way. But if you know that you're going to do something like make socks, Get one pair of good needles and knit on the really nice ones. Enjoy what you're doing. It makes a huge difference. All right, getting off my soapbox. Um, this next pair of socks, yes, four pairs of socks today are finished. Um, 
are um, dyed by One Knitting Man Recommends. The yarn is called Budgie Smugglers. Oh yeah, Budgie Smugglers. Um, Budgie Smugglers, if you're not from Australia, are an Australian wor word for speedos. Um, like, I don't even know if speedos are still speedos, because speedos is also a brand name. It's an Australian word for um, swimmers that look like undies. Budgie smugglers. Um, yeah, so this is beautiful. Someone um, commented that it looks like um, like gem corn, coloured corn, and I totally see that. These are a gift. All these ones are for me. The rest are gifts. Um, so these are a gift. They are DK weight, so they knit up super quick. Um, I started them on the 7th of June and finished on the 11th of June while working on other things. Um, it is delightfully soft yarn. Not all yarn is the same, and this is delightful, and I kind of want another three or four skeins of it. It is just beautiful. It is 80-20 merino nylon, and yeah, hand-dyed. I don't know if um, One Man Re One Knitting Man Recommends is local to Canberra, but I bought it at a yarn show in Canberra. This is DK Weight Vanilla Socks by of the Crazy Sock Lady. This is a free pattern, so if you have DK weight sock yarn or you have fingering weight that you're going to hold double, go check it out. It is free. Um, I did 10 rows for the cuff, 30 for the leg, and then the foot to size, according to the person who they're for. I just love them. I love the, like I love with hand dyed how like this one you're getting a bit of striping this one is much more mixed it's also kind of darker um, but yeah just really really fun quick to knit um, I have a feeling yeah I started these I got to see my sister again and my brother again before I left I started these on at my sister's house and knit them on the way home um, yeah, like it was just super, super, super quick and enjoyable. I was trying to knit something different, which I'll talk about in a minute, and it wasn't working, so I went back to that one. It was great. All right. Um, I have one more finish, which technically I finished before these socks. This one is a baby blanket. Now, this one... I love and there's a few reasons for this this is a very special blanket for a very special baby that is due in about a month so I needed to show you so I can give it to the mum and dad um, this yarn has been sitting in a bag waiting to make this blanket for a long time before I even knew that this mum and dad were having a baby um, this yarn is all, I do have yarn tags for this one, if I can find one, there we go, it's all Vera Yarns designs, sorry I'm not sure that's going to focus, maybe, um, it is all merino sock high twist, 100 grams, 365 meters, 2 ply, 100% superwash merino yarn, it's hand dyed in Ireland. Now, I bought this yarn, planning to make lots and lots and lots of brightly coloured socks. I made one pair of socks out of it and then realised that it's 100% wool. Because it's called Merino Sock High Twist, I thought that I could use it for socks. No. It's Merino Sock High Twist in that it's fingering weight, but it is 100% merino. And so the socks that I made out of it, yeah, I got, I'm sitting on the floor today, so I'm just going to jump up. Um, yeah, the socks that I made out of it just got holes in it, and I was really disappointed because I really wanted those socks. They were a pattern pair as well. I'll, I'll darn them with sock yarn and see if I can get some more wear out of it. But it meant that all my other things went into a bag trying to figure out what to do, and at least two of these, maybe three, were part of my 12 skeins that I want to knit last year. 
and I debated doing like a wallop cowl, alternating two of them, and I debated a few other things. And finally I was like, no, I just, I'm not sure. So they all went into the bag, and then I saw this scrappy blanket, and I thought, I'm going to do that. This is Vertices Unite Baby Blanket by Stephen West. It is a DK weight blanket, so I held it double, and it is a heavy fingering. So I'm not sure if it's ended up bigger or not. It is unblocked. I'm not... I'm probably not going to block it. I'm probably just going to steam block it because um, my mother-in-law has one of those handheld steam things. So I'll probably just do that. All the ends are woven in. It is just so squishy and delightful. And it is winter in Canberra, so it is perfect for a baby who is being born in the next month. Um, I will say it is not um, super wash yarn. Oh, no, it is. 100% superwash merino. Haha! I was worried that I was giving non superwash merino yarn to a baby. It's all superwash, it's fine. Um, Alright, I'm going to open this up and show you. Yeah. So much to talk about with this one. Um, I think I've shown it as a whip, but that was a while ago. So let's get into it. I used, I had four full skeins. So this orange, remember it's held double, so it's knit up differently to if it was held single. But this orange, it was called pumpkin, oh, yeah, hang on, pumpkin seeds. Really, really fun. Um... The black in here, the black stripes that's also held double, that was called Trick or Treat. Um, this pink that's held double, like this pinky other one in there, is called Daydream. And this is probably the best place. Um, the not pink lines, the ones that have like green and yellow, green and orange and red, they are called Holly. I had a lot of fun with this. It was also a little bit of a, I've got to make decisions, help, because the pattern is written for five colours, and then you, it says use this colour and this colour here, this colour, this colour here. I had four colours, and then I had a whole bunch of scraps, because I'd bought some 20 gram mini packs, hoping to use them for heels and toes, which again, doesn't work when they don't have nylon in them. Um, and so I had some leftovers from that. I'd use some in another blanket, and then I wasn't really happy with how that was working, so I decided, like, because it's a thicky yarn, I just wanted to use it all together in the same smushy blanket. Um, so, like, these ones down here were two of my minis, the white and the purple, and so I just held them with themselves. Sometimes, um, like over here... I held the same purple here with one of my other colours to make that a bit lighter. And then when that ran out, I held it double with something different. Um, this one here, that's the black colour. So the same black that's over here, but held double with a lime green. Um, these ones here, this is a pale yellow and a dark yellow. Um, a pale yellow and a white, and then a pale yellow and a dark yellow. Um, yeah, so I just kind of mix them up. This one, this was actually a bit of leftover. It was pine and cool bark from a jumper that I'd made, um, that used a bit. And so I held that double with, um, just a teal mini. And then I changed over here to holding it double with the holly colorway, um, when the blue mini ran out. So it's just a whole lot of different colors, color explosion, um, you know, to use a Stephenism, say yes, don't stress. And then probably my, not my favorite part, but just kind of the icing on the cake, the cherry on top was for the eye cord bind off. I didn't really have much of any color except for possibly like one of the pinks. Um, maybe Holly, maybe Daydream. So like the, the really pinky ones. And I was like, I just, I don't really want to tie it all together with pink. I was thinking of doing the black around the edge, but then I used it a second time or a third time somewhere and kind of ran out of enough of that. But I also thought, hey, the black 
has a black section, white section, black section, white section. So what if I hold that double with the minis? And so that's what I did. And so what I actually did was I picked a mini that kind of matched that section. So the yellow has a yellow mini. The teal has a lime green mini. Because again, I just had run out of colours by this point. The pink has a hot pink mini. Which goes for a while. The orange, I use the yellow again. And then this bit, which has pale pink in it, I use the pale pink mini. And so it just means that the edges just kind of match up with the actual, yeah, the actual colour. I love it. I did think afterwards, because I really liked how this is a bit contrasty. I was like, maybe I should have used, like, yellow on the edge of the pink or something. But, yeah. Anyway, I am so delighted with this. I kind of wish it was much bigger and I could just use it as a blanket for myself. Because this would be a very small black blanket if it was for me. But it is delightful and squishy. And this one I started... Well, I was on a weekend away with my sister um, on the 13th of March and I finished it on the 10th of June. So about three months to knit a baby blanket. It is mostly garter. So it's, I mean, it's all garter. Um, so you're just kind of knitting both sides. Um, and so you will get a lot of stretch when it actually is blocked. Um, but because it's all really random shapes, you have a lot of increasing, decreasing, decreasing every round, decreasing every other round, picking up stitches. And so it's, I wouldn't say it's a beginner friendly pattern, um, but it is a really fun pattern to do. You just need a bit of brain space because once you've done, like I found for some of them, I could do one or two repeats and then just keep going and that's fine. For other ones like the, the orange one over here, when I picked it up and was knitting back and forth in here, that's where I actually paused it for a while. I was like, this is driving me batty. And then I finally picked it up and finished the orange. And then I think you do the green. And then when I got to this section here, I also had a bit of a pause as I was trying to figure out what on earth I was doing. Um, the, the pattern is clear, so it wasn't a pattern problem. It was just a getting your head around increases and decreases thing. Um, yeah, so I love that. I love I love that it's made use of so much of my scraps. I didn't bring what I have left over to show you, but, like, it's really not much. It's maybe... Do I even weigh it? Um, this weighs 510 grams, and since I had four full skeins and scraps, I've used the equivalent of five skeins. Um, I still have maybe, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 grams of scraps. It's not many. And I will probably use that in, um, I'll put some in my Coziest Memories blanket. I may use it in my DK, not my DK, my jelly roll blanket, my fingering weight jelly roll, because there is yarn of different thicknesses in that already. Um... But yeah, that's that's my squishy, delightful baby blanket for my friend. Um, and I'm looking forward to giving that to her. I actually spent the day with her yesterday and I was thinking I could give it to her, but I hadn't recorded in a podcast. I hadn't taken photos. So I was like, just give it to her next week. It's fine. It's fine. All right. But like I said, I only have two active whips at the moment because I've been finishing like this one. I did not want to have to post that back from Poland. Like, no thank you. Um, the socks, I can post them if I want to, but also I'm right next to who a lot of them are for, so I'm just going to do that here. Um, all right, so I then tried to make my husband a scarf, and I realised from what I was doing that it was not going to work. I was not going to have enough yarn. And so I impulsively cast on this sock. This yarn is by Giacomo. I will pull out the tag for you. This is how I lose the tags, but I'll pull it out for you. Oh look, I do have the tag. Danubio, which is these ones. Amazing. I do have the tag. It was just in my bag. 
This one is Giacomo Textiles. I also bought this at the yarn show in Canberra. Uh, it's Superwash Merino DK 8 ply and it is called Fruit Tinkle Cocktail, which I just thought was really cute. Plus, I love these colours. These colours are amazing. Um, it is 75 Merino, 25% nylon. And it's definitely not as soft as these ones, which are an 80-20, but it is still perfectly delightful yarn. And I am on the heel flap. So again, I've done 10 rows for the cuff, 30 rows for the leg. I haven't marked the second one. And I am doing a bit of a pattern. It's just broken rib isn't the right word. Basically, I'm doing a three by one rib, but I'm only doing a rib on every second row rather than every row. Um, just, yeah, means that I'm not, yeah, means I have to pay more attention to where I'm at because I'm not just doing the same thing all the time, but it also means I can just knit a row plane without, um, without doing a rib every row. These are for me because I have been wearing the same pair of DK weight socks as slippers inside my slippers for a long time and so I just wanted some more DK socks because it is cold here. Um, I'm currently in Canberra and often when I'm walking I'm taking my son to school it's like four degrees or three degrees or two degrees and so warm things are helpful. Um, yeah not much to say about this it the yarn company is based in Sydney Australia or North Richmond Australia for those who are from Sydney um, it's actually right around the corner from where I grew up, but I never knew that they were there until they came to Canberra. So thanks for coming to Canberra, guys. Um, yeah. Um, I am using DK Weight Vanilla Socks by Cave the Crazy Sock Lady as a base for the pattern, and then just, like I said, doing that broken rib on it. Um, I don't know if I actually have a project page for this. I will, before I post the... I will make one before I put this up, so by the time you're seeing this, there will be a project page. Um, yes, so they, I've started them, but they have taken a ba back seat to this, which may or may not show up well. Oh, you can see it a little bit there. Um, this is the Moby Neck by Petite Knit. And so what this is, is it's not a jumper, it's just a, like, this is the back, but it's just, a, um, like, I don't know, kind of like a scarf. It's like a, a neck is what she calls it. I don't know. Um, so you just kind of start here, you knit up you cast off stitches for the neck, you cast on stitches, you knit down the other side, and then you pick up stitches around the neck and do a collar. And so it's just kind of a way of getting a turtleneck to put under jumpers, not jumpers, jackets and things without actually having to add a whole jumper under your jacket. Um, which, on one hand, I'm like, why not just make a full jumper? But on the other hand, I'm like, I totally get it that when you're inside when you're inside and you're wearing a jumper but you need to put a jacket on to go outside you don't necessarily want to add another whole layer but you want a scarf but scarfs also fall off and so having just kind of a turtleneck collar is really great but you also want it to kind of come down and hide under your jacket so you're not just got like a random collar sitting there um so that's my logic for doing it i'm doing this for my husband because I was going to make him a scarf and like I said the scarf just didn't work. I wasn't going to have enough yarn. I hope I'm going to have enough yarn for this one. Um, but again I'm not certain. Um, based on... Oh. Lol. I'm so not going to have enough yarn. Oh boy. Alright. So this is what I've just realised. I can either keep going or I can frog it and do something different. These are 50 gram balls. So this is what I used for my advent sweater, advent cardigan last year. And I had two and a little bit balls left over. And so I was like, that's fine. I can knit something for my husband out of that. Um, because I wanted to knit him something to keep his neck warm. 
I might have to talk to him to see if he actually wants it or not because I have to buy more yarn if I'm going to finish it. Um, and I was like, I've got two balls, that should be fine. What I forgot is that these are 50 gram balls, not 100 gram balls. And so when I was thinking the pattern go needs 400 meters of DK, and I was like, yeah, I've got two balls, that's fine. But that I've only got 200 meters, so it's definitely not going to work. Such is life. Is this going to be my new the yarn that would not be knit yarn? Trying to use leftovers, I tell you what. All right. Well, that's taken the wind out of my sails a little bit. I'll have to figure out what I do. But I will tell you about the pattern. The pattern so far is delightful. Um, it's got some kind of seed stitch over here, a cable, um, a little bit of here. Yeah, some twisted things, um, some faux cables at the front here, and then goes back the other way. Um, yeah, so, like, I've been enjoying doing it. I only started it this morning, so this is what I've done in a couple of hours of childminding. Um, yeah. I don't know if you're going to see this as a finished project or not. Maybe I've only got one whip going at the moment. Yeah. Oh boy. All right. Well, there you go. That's, that's what I got. But, um, I'm doing that according to pattern. The only thing I've done differently so far is I just did a long tail cast on rather than an Italian cast on, but everything else is according to pattern and I am enjoying it. And maybe I'll just buy some more yarn for the back. Maybe I will not. We'll see. But I do also have some spinning to show you. Oh, all right. I am pretty excited about these. Oh, that looks like it's shiny, like it's sparkly. It's not, but it's beautiful. Um, all right. These are my two latest spins and they are unwashed. Haven't washed any of my spinning for a while. I'll wait till I get back to Poland for that. Um, I'm hoping that it's not going to fall apart on me. That would be good. Um, I'll start with this one. This one is... Okay. Merino tweed wool roving. I bought 100 grams from the wool room in Young and it is called Eye Candy. Now, I... I still consider myself pretty new to spinning. I've been spinning for a year. I haven't been spinning every day for a year. There is definitely consistency things here. Um, like, I don't know how much you can see, but like there is thick and thin. There is um, some plies thick and thin, some strands thick and thin, but it's also a tweed yarn. And it was my first time spinning tweed and I initially did not like the texture. The more that I spun, the more I was like, actually, I'm getting into a groove and I can do this. Um, now, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I'm interested to see what happens when I wash it, to see if it becomes looser and softer or whether it kind of keeps its structure. Uh, yeah, I spun this. I spun the singles, I want to say, over two nights while watching Lego Masters with the family. So the singles were done really quickly, but then I started spinning the singles for this one and this one did not get applied until this was finished. And this took a lot longer. So this is, like I said, hundred grams of Merino tweed wool roving and I did it two ply. So I just split, split it into two, spun one, spun the other, and then plied it together. Sorry, color is doing weird things at the moment. I'm not sure why. Um, yeah, so I just plied it two ply, nice and simple. This one is merino wool and mulberry silk, 100 grams roving, and it is called the Luminous Lagoon, which I totally see that. Now, you can see some bits of like brighter teal. I think in this one, all the silk is the teal, and all of the merino was a black and so it's been blended together as I spun it blended more and so you can get little pops of this and you have like a heathered look 
but overall you have kind of a pretty consistent pretty consistent color it was like it was fun to spin the silk i think it was my first time spinning a silk merino the silk was definitely slippery but also doesn't need a huge amount of twist to make it solid and so after spinning merino which had to be quite tight it was quite a different experience um and also i like i was doing it short forward um, which means like kind of pulling it out sliding back pulling out sliding back i did do a little bit of um long draw where i kind of just let the twist into the yarn and then feed it in um, just to demonstrate what that was and it was beautiful spinning this that way but i'd already spun three quarters of it so I didn't want to change so I went back to my short forward but I'm tempted to go buy some more of similar fiber so that I can do some long draw with silk and merino and see if I actually like the result or not um, it was still combed top it was still roving so it's not not combed top it was still roving so it's not going to be a woolen yarn even if I did that but it was just a really delightful experience um what else? This one I chain plied. I was planning to do a thick, actually, I don't know how many meters this is. Um, I'd like looking at it. It's a probably DK average, maybe sport to DK. Um, and it's tweedy. So it's probably around 200 grams. I would, sorry, 200 meters. I would guess, but I forgot to measure. I forgot to count. Um, this one, was 250 meters chain plied before washing um my plan was to do it thicker and then to do a two ply and it just wanted to go thin i could not make this thick with any consistency so i just did a thin one and decided to chain ply to get it a bit thicker um and i'm really really happy with the result i like that the yarn itself is a bit rounder because it's a three ply um it is still soft and squishy and beautiful yeah that's that's what it is i am not doing any more spinning until i get back to my home because i just don't i could possibly if i put a lot of effort into it get another spin done in the next week but I need my brain elsewhere and so my spinning will stop but that's why I wanted to finish these two because I wanted to get them off the bobbins off the wheel and give the wheel and the bobbins back to my mother-in-law because they are hers and I've just been using them I do love hand spun I have no plans for these um, I did have plans for this one and I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not I thought maybe I could do a beanie out of this one because it's pretty um but then i'm like it's also silk and so i'm not sure if that's going to be warm enough for what i would want a beanie for um yeah so i don't know they're beautiful i'm gonna put them into my stash no i'm gonna wash them and then put them into my stash and see how i go from there all right that's all of my knitting stuff this is a quicker one because yeah i've not got months and months and months worth of knitting to show you <laughs> um yeah so thanks for coming i will talk live stuff a little bit but if you're just here for the knitting thanks for coming um yeah and hopefully we'll see you next time life all right well like i said canberra is cold at the moment um very very cold like even now i'm picked up my lukewarm tea to kind of try and warm my fingers up again because it's just cold and the room I'm sitting in doesn't actually have air conditioning or heating so that's just what it is um yeah like there was frost on the ground as we went to school yesterday which my son was very excited about he's five um yeah it's cold but then I was outside for a lot of the day yesterday and by the end of the day my head was just sore because of the hot cold hot cold hot cold that was happening all day i also don't have 
a beanie, which was on my list of things to knit, which I probably won't knit now because of time. I'm just not going to get it done before I go back to Poland and it's summer. So I probably won't do that. Um, yeah, we did a road trip up to Sydney and over to Orange on last week, not the weekend, last week. And that was really fun. We got to see family that we haven't seen since we've been back in Australia this time. Um, and got to see brother and sister who we have seen, but spend a little bit more time and spend, yeah, just kind of say goodbye well with them. So that was really special. Um, and then, yeah, we've just been going around saying goodbye, seeing people we haven't seen, um, packing, figuring all the things out for our next trip to Poland. Um, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. I am really looking forward to being back in Poland, to being in my house, seeing friends, um, getting back into routines in a house that's my own. If you don't know, right now we're living with my in-laws and it's a really, um, really full house, basically. <laughs> a really full house. Um, so we will miss them immensely when we go back and our kids especially will be incredibly sad to not be living with them anymore. But it'll also be nice to be in our own space again and have our own routines, um, eat the food that we want to eat slash can cook and sauce. Um, yeah, it'll be good. Other than that, I mean, that's kind of been all consuming, moving countries and seeing people. Um, but that's basically all we've done. I think we are planning to go to, there's an exhibition in Canberra at the moment about ancient Egypt. So we are planning to go to that uh maybe on monday so today saturday maybe in a couple of days we'll go to that and that is something that's been on my husband's bucket list before we go back to poland and there is also an exhibition at the same time about um convict quilters so people who made quilts on the way to australia in the 17 and possibly 1800s and so I'm looking, I'm hoping that we'll be able to see that one as well. I would love to see such old quilts made from scraps and different things. If you can hear some little banging, that's my daughter thudding overhead. Yeah, so hopefully that we can do that. Um, yeah, I have a real urge to go off shopping at the moment. Thrift shopping, antique shopping. But again, I know that I'm moving the country soon. So there's no point in doing those things because then I have to pack and move and do all those. But that's my urge at the moment, is to go thrifting, go up shopping. I think I will resist. Yeah. Yeah, and in terms of projects to make, I don't know. If I don't end up making this one, the, the neck, the neck collar um, by Petit Nick, the Moby collar by Petit Nick, if I don't end up doing that one, I don't know what I'll do next. I may just stick with socks and maybe do scrappy blankets a bit until we leave. Because that's just kind of, yeah. Oh, actually, I was thinking, um, I started a sweater in September last year. And I was debating whether or not I'd do that. I found an, a pattern. I was designing it and I've given up on that. So I found a pattern that is, I think, what I want. And so I may just cast that on and do that instead. It's still here as one of my whips. It's just one that I haven't touched for over a year. Almost a year. Almost a year. Yeah, we'll see. But I think that's all I've got for you today. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, yeah, if you can like and if you want to see another video, subscribe. That would be awesome. But otherwise, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining me. I hope you got some knitting done enjoyed a little bit of a sit down and I will see you next time. Bye.